who was poet laureate, and uh, it's called The Lanyard. <laughs> the other day I was ricocheting slowly off the blue walls of this room, moving as if underwater from typewriter to piano, from bookshelf to an envelope lying on the floor, when I found myself in the L section of the dictionary where my eyes fell upon the word lanyard. No cookie nibbled by a French novelist could send one into the past more suddenly, a past where I sat at a workbench at a camp by a deep Adirondack, Adirondack lake learning how to braid long thin plastic strips into a lanyard a gift for my mother. I had never seen anyone use a lanyard or wear one, if that's what you did with them, but that did not keep me from crossing strand over strand again and again until I had made a boxy red and white lanyard for my mother. She gave me life and milk from her breasts and I gave her a lanyard. <laughs> she nursed me in many a sick room, lifted spoons of medicine to my lips, laid cold face cloths on my forehead, and then led me out into airy light and taught me to walk and swim. And I, in turn, gave her a lanyard. Here are thousands of meals, she said, and here is clothing and a good education. And here is your lanyard, I replied, <laughs> which I made a little help from a counselor. <laughs> here is a breathing body and a beating heart, strong legs, bones and teeth, and two clear eyes to read the world, she whispered. And here, I said, is the lanyard I made at camp. <laughs> And here, I wish to say to her now, is a smaller gift, not the worn truth that you can never repay your mother, but the rueful admission that when she took the two-tone lanyard from my hand, I was as sure as a boy could be that this useless, worthless thing I wove out of boredom would be enough to make us even. 